This is Dr. Kurt Samlaska. I will be talking to you today about auricular pseudocysts and how to treat them with buttons. A 51-year-old white female presents for routine evaluation of psoriasis. She noted she was having some soreness and swelling involving her left ear. She was scheduled to have surgery by an ear, nose, and throat doc for this ear within a few weeks. She denied any history of ear trauma. She did note sleeping on her left side due to right hip pain. And the prior three weeks, she noted some gradual swelling of the ear with tenderness. On physical examination, there is a 1.5 centimeter by 2.0 centimeter cystic mask involving the scaphoid fossa of her left ear. You can see the swelling of the scaphoid fossa here. Treatment. We aspirated the pseudocyst using a 21 gauge needle and a 3 cc syringe. She presented four days later with recurrence and we treated it a second time using the same technique. Seven days after the second treatment, she presented again with recurrence of the pseudocyst and at this time we decided to do something different. Auricular pseudocysts are uncommon non-inflammatory fluctuant swellings of the ear believed to be caused by glycosaminoglycan accumulation with subsequent ischemic necrosis of the cartilage. And this is related to minor repetitive trauma to the ear. It is frequently observed in wrestlers. Many treatment options have been used with variable success. Simple aspiration is successful about 40% of the time. Plaster of Paris casts have been used, as have compression buttons using soft gauze bolsters. Injectable agents such as steroids, trichloroacetic acid, and minocycline have been used, and surgical intervention to include incision, drainage, curettage, and actual excision of the anterior cartilage have been used with variable success. Sclerosing agents such as fibrin glue have also been utilized. It should also be noted that trichloroacetic acid and minocycline are actually sclerosing agents since they're very irritating to deep tissues. Complications? Well, surgical intervention doesn't always work. And it can lead to a cauliflower ear. It can lead to floppy ear deformities. And surgical bolsters, as well as plaster of Paris casts, are bulky and uncomfortable. In thinking about how to approach this, we thought using buttons and suturing directly through the cartilage of the ear, providing even compression to the pseudocyst from front to back, might be useful. We chose soft edged buttons to try to prevent any type of irritation to the cartilage or the ear itself. We use these for front and back looking for rounded edges. These buttons were placed in a surgical sterilization pack and autoclaved. They were sutured in place using proline suture. Here's the button as you can see on the front of the ear and here's the larger button with rounded edges sutured in place in the posterior aspect of the ear. The buttons were left in place for one week, seven days. After the uh, buttons were removed, you can see that there is a nice clearance of the pseudocyst and the ear appears normal. The use of buttons was first reported by Tallet et al. in 1985. And the method was used to maintain adequate localized pressure in 10 patients with auricular hematomas. The buttons were removed after seven days. In 1991, Cohen and Katz used surgical intervention followed by treatment with trichloroacetic acid button bolsters in a single patient. In this particular case, the buttons were removed 10 days later. In 2011, Gokte and Aslan used a punch biopsy technique to remove the fluid and then a button bolster was sutured into place in a single patient. The buttons were kept in place for 13 days. So I would recommend that you use this technique and keep the buttons in place for at least 7 to 14 days. In our case, we only did it for a week. I have treated two other patients using this technique and have had no reoccurrence in any of the patients. This has been reported in Skin and Allergy News. 
December 6, 2011. Here is the uh, website if you need to take a look at the published article. Thank you.